Hi, I just want to go over a little problem that I run into from time to time in Python. And it, of course, it can pretty much apply to other programming languages around. Also, especially object oriented programming languages. So, this is one of the ways that Python kind of lacks purity in the object oriented department, even though it does, I would say it's probably leaning towards more pure than most languages that call themselves object oriented, but it's still quite a bit of ways from being very pure or 100% pure, right? But that's okay because it's about 30 years old now and um, it's only within like the last 20 years that object oriented programming sort of become, since the early 2000s basically is when object oriented programming sort of come full circle and like the experts in that field have been able to clarify from the late 90s to early 2000s era, they were able to kind of clarify like, yeah, this is the way stuff should have been. Um, as far as I know, the self-programming language was either brand new, fresh, or maybe not even now. I can't even remember now. But basically the self-programming language, which was after Smalltalk, was when a lot of the principles were really more wholly defined. And that's what JavaScript, the original JavaScript, was inspired by was that self-programming language. So it sort of just took the C syntax and merged that with a lot of the, that's where you get like the prototypal inheritance and all that kind of cool stuff, which is actually really advanced. Um, if you think about it, you have function constructors, or I should say constructor functions that are factory functions. They return an object other than themselves. And you can have lots of them and assign them to to have different uh, prototypes and whatnot. So that is very pure. That basically gives you like factory functions for free. A lot of people don't realize that. It took me years and years to realize that for myself, that that's not just like some little, a lot of that was written off as like, oh, you know, JavaScript's just this weak little scripting language. And so they had to do that as a shortcut to keep it simple. And, you know, they couldn't go, it's pseudo object oriented programming and I have to say it in that voice because that's really the voice it's it's like give me a break that is the most pure form of object oriented programming like one of the most pure forms that exists known to man to this day um, anyway we're not talking about JavaScript right it's about Python so anyway Python falls short in a lot of ways um, and one of the ways that I find most annoying is that a lot of times a none in Python, of course, is roughly equivalent of a null in other languages. And if you don't return anything from a function or a method, then it just effectively returns that none type. It, it basically returns a null for you, kind of like how JavaScript will return that undefined. And I mean, if you're just, I, I definitely pit the keep it simple principle above all principles in programming so on that level that's okay but once you get into object oriented programming as much as possible I want to say we should be trying to return a reference to that object especially if we're tempted to do like a void return type in a typed language or a uh, a strongly typed strictly typed language whatever you want to call it or if we're gonna just let it roll off and return an undefined or an untype don't waste that. Return a reference to that object because uh, if you're going to return a none type, you've obviously there's been some side effect, and most especially if that side effect was on the object itself, then most definitely return the reference to that object because then you can do cool stuff like chaining and all sorts of stuff that object-oriented programming is supposed to be able to do, right? And when you do that none type, that ruins it. You can't do the chaining. Um, that also goes for things like, okay, I'm just gonna get into an example here. So we'll just do a class. I'm just making a generic object and I'm going to define an init method, which is just in case you're unfamiliar with Python, that's just a constructor method. And this is where you'd sign, assign uh, your so-called member variables. They're called attributes in Python, property values in JavaScript. And you just, in Python, you just say self. We're going to set up a count on this one, and we're going to initialize it to zero. 
and then we're going to define a method called increment and I'm just passing it the self that's what you do an object that's um it's a more explicit turn uh a more explicit version of like the this in other languages in case you don't know so self is just a reference to this object it's kind of like the difference between if I didn't put self there in Python this would become more of like what you think of like a static method in Java where it would become like a class method so by putting that self there I'm saying hey this is a uh, an instance method right because it takes an instance of itself so anyway that's what that means um, and we're going to say self dot count which is just referring to that instance value that instance attribute and we're going to increment it by one so self equals itself plus one or excuse me self dot count equals itself plus one okay and so that creates that object then we'll create an object an instance of that object which this would just be like you know object obj equals new object in some other languages yeah, and if I just type obj you can see right there it's an of the object type and it's whatever which inherits from the lowercase object type by default which is just that object object but of course I've added a you know the constructor method and an increment method so anyway we can now say obj dot count and that's just a regular old property regardless of what you think might think about the purity of you know directly that oh that doesn't encapsulate the value big deal a lot of a lot of uh, encapsulation is half baked. This is following the keep it simple, because I'm just trying to do a basic example. I don't need to do a git count like that's pointless. I know I don't need it, and in Python it's even extra pointless because I can go back and sort of like overtake the uh, the count and turn it into a a git or instead of just a direct property access if I want to later. But uh, and, uh, and then a, a lot of the, like I said, a lot of the encapsulation being half-baked is um, that even if you have a getter, if I have a thing like git count, just on, on the note of purity, that isn't purity. That isn't pure encapsulation because I know there's a counter variable. All that's doing is it's just saying, okay, I can wrap some behavior around returning that property value, right? So you still know what's in there. It's still not to, it's only encapsulated access wise but it's not encapsulated in the sense like you know there's a count you might know it's a number you're gonna give me a number to go like you know maybe I'll just check with it if it's within some bounds and then assign it you know like some error checking or something that's like lowercase encapsulation but if you want true proper encapsulation then you should just have behaviors that describe what you want to accomplish with that object more and less about what its internal values might be. So I, I don't want to veer too off onto that because I'll probably not give a really good description right now and take up too much time. But anyway, that's what I think about encapsulation. So back to this subject. So this, uh, this def increment method right here, it effectively, there's an effectively a return none down here like a return null you know or you could even say return zero whatever you want to think of it as there's like this worthless nothing return value down here that's occurring so if I were to say uh, print the return value of obj dot increment then we see it's none right we could return the count and that would still be kind of worthless too so let's go ahead and take a look at what the count is object.count and it's one now because we just incremented it with that call right well what if i have a function that's uh i can't i'm trying to think of a name like there's situations where you end up in right where you want to do something with an object and then take that object after you do something with it like obviously in chaining where you have like obj dot you know something method and then after that you want it to return an instance of itself and then do something else you know stuff like that right well 
you obviously can't do that with this situation because it's returning none so you'd have to do everything stepwise like procedurally and then that ruins like if you're doing like especially if it was like an async programming style which object oriented in its pure sense should be able to allow for async by default so you'd want to use chaining if you want to purposely have a sequence there so anyway i'm just sort of defending the idea of return a reference to yourself as much as possible if you're going to increment yourself that is um you know up here of course like i'm when i say yourself i'm talking about like an instance of this object so if you're going to increment yourself that's a side effect on yourself so return yourself you know what i mean you've just changed yourself for some reason so other than things like maybe display like okay if you want to do void on that big deal like there's some edge case or that's not even an edge case really right there's some common cases where whatever you can argue about having no valuable return type there but i just i want to stress the fact that if you manipulate an object return a reference to it but there's tons of situations where even with standard python objects and whatnot python does this all the time a lot of libraries do this all the time where they just more times than not i'd say they don't return a reference to themselves and you're like wow you get caught in these pickles to where you're like okay i want to do something i have this function called like uh Okay, display count. And it's gonna take an object, and all it's gonna do is print that object, uh, object dot count, right? Well, now I'm in the problem where, like say that, or now I'm going to present a problem, right? And I've ran into this, I couldn't think of a specific, I mean like a week or two ago, I was doing something and it really, made sense to have this functionality to me and I was just like oh. so I figured this out with Python I was like is there a trick like a comma operator trick and I was like well Python doesn't really have like the comma operator per se which a lot of people are like oh you know the comma operator it's so worthless it's not especially for these exact situations like this this is when it like totally shows its worth so uh and I thought, oh, the next thing that came to my mind, like a tuple seems kind of like a comma operator. Could that work? And the answer is yes, it does. It's a little more crufty than a plain old comma operator, but you can achieve the same exact effect. So if I want to call display count and pass it OBJ, then we get one, right? And do it again, we get one still. But what if I want to within, like say this is in some complex expression or whatever, and I want it to, uh, increment like that well all of a sudden i get an error because i'm not returning a reference to the object right i'm returning this none type which has no attribute count so if i want to display count now i'm left with the thing where i have to go okay object dot increment oops i have to do like a where's I have to do like the object dot increment and then I have to do the display count on object like that like a two-step process and you know in the future in a more asynchronous environment who knows what happens in between those two calls right so and plus it's just two calls and that you could replace each one of those lines with more complex lines where it's like it Obviously, the ideal thing to do would be able to be to call object increment within there, just like that, right? But I can cry all I want, and that's not going to happen. So what do you do? Well, here's what you can do. You can say you can make a tuple, and then you can say um, object dot increment, and then call that, and then do the comma operator, and then just do have the object itself there, and then return that object just like that so what I'm doing is I'm it's gonna come in here it's gonna inc it's gonna run this first and increment the object and then right here is just you know the object itself and we're gonna reference that because this is index 0 and this is index 1 just like an array type in other languages and uh, if we do that then we can see we get the reference to the object there and <clears throat> 
if I were to do a dot count on that, and we can see it's five, and then if we do one more, six, seven. So we're getting the effect we want there. And you can use that trick in other languages too if the designers of whatever particular call you're using didn't want to be so cool as to return you a reference to the object there. And then of course what we can do with that is uh, wrap this in that call to display count and then we get that same effect. So it's a little crufty because you know you've got to wrap it in the the parentheses and then you've got to reference that second element but it will work it will of course increment it and then return a reference to itself so just remember whenever you can stay pure with the object oriented design return a reference to yourself if you're mutating any value inside of yourself because why not Thanks for listening and watching and all that stuff. Have a good one.